you need to try on Peter Bukovic. Uh, you've got me standing. All right, the Red Mantis Matron doesn't like that bubble, and she's going to get rid of it. There is the sound of spell casting. There is a dispel magic being cast on Bukerbeck's um, on Bukerbeck's magic circle against evil. She rolls a nat one and dispels third level magic. Bukerbeck is a ninth level caster, so there's a flash of of competing magics, and it's quite clear that Bukerbeck's abjuration uh, 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 circle is is still in effect. And the way he's positioned it, let me draw the abjuration. He's got it kind of angled like this. Pharisee. I cast glitter dust at the house. In the door, the open doorway of the house. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this matronly looking. Uh, Red Mantis Assassin, you have seen this particular individual before. Nice. Is nice. Uh, full of glitter, and she gets a will save against the blindness. DC 20. It's a will save, right? Uh, that's a good question. I'm pretty sure. Sh- yes, it is. Yeah. She rolls a at 20 and gets a 40. <clears throat> that's going to do it. But she is now visible. Yes. Mockernum is just waiting dutifully at uh, Zephyrus' side. Red Mantis rogues. Looks like the fight is going on over here now. I also start Bard Song. Okay. Because why not? So we need to put down that caster, huh? Okay. So they come in. They're going to attack Bukerbeck. They can reload their uh, their blowguns really quickly, and they're they're both firing darts at Bukerbeck. AC twenty nine and Nat twenty. Ah, <laughs> uh, that, yeah, he saw them coming, so it's not a, uh, it's not a sneak attack. Bukerbeck's AC is twenty six, without any buffs up. He does have a deflection bonus of plus two, so his abjuration effect doesn't give him any further. All right, let's roll to confirm that crit. It is a crit. Uh, so it's 1d2 plus 1 damage and a fort save. So he took 2 damage on the first one. And then they crit with the blowgun dart. Oops. Is an amazing crit. So that's 3d2 plus 3 for 6 damage. <laughs> <laughs> And then the two fort saves versus <coughs> the DC 15 poison. Bukerbeck's fort save is 15. Just don't roll ones. Just don't roll ones. Yeah. And he rolled a one on his a... first one. So Bukerbeck has f- fallen unconscious. His abjuration <laughs> spell is still is still working. You can see these two darts. One of them hit him on the outside of his chin. One of them actually hit him on the roof of his mouth, and he he passed out before he had a chance to uh, uh, before he had a chance to pull them out. Bukovic faith. What happened to the faith? <laughs> his eyes were like in the back of his head, and there's this weird froth kind of now building up around his mouth and and spewing forth. Uh, professor. Here we go. Uh, all right. <laughs> it's summoned. Uh, yes, uh, There's an angry click from uh, <laughs> from the Red Mantis matron as she looks up at Farisay, who yells that out. <laughs> uh, have faith, Henry. Remember faith in yourself. 
Uh, we're gods amongst men these days. Uh, here we go. I'll use a swift action to spend three uh, arcane full points to increase DCs by spells I cast the turn by two. And okay. then I will spend my remaining two actions to do dual spell casting. Uh, with one of them, I am going to silently cast Dispel Magic uh, on this uh, spider in front of me. Uh, and then with the second one, I am going to cast a Piercing Phantasmal Kill. All right, the first roll is your Dispel Magic. What caster level are you? Uh, I am level 11. And piercing Wizard? does what? Uh, the piercing will just get through SR if she has any on the phantasmal kill. Oh, okay. All right, so, uh, yeah. But just you boosted your caster level by two. Yes. Yeah, right. Oh, no, you the... boosted the DCs. Sorry. I boosted the I DCs. I don't think it matters for Dispel Magic. No, it's just a D20 uh, roll. It's D20 plus yeah, 11 yeah. minus 11, and that's the caster level that you... Um, uh, that you dispel. Nine? Nine is not high enough. It fails by four. Yeah, that sounds too low. Okay, well. You still have a uh, it didn't you, work! You still have a hero point in the tank. Not that I'm pushing you to spend it, but that would grant you a plus four on this roll and make the bug go away. I'm going to do it. Use it up. That's what it's <laughs> there for. Boogerbeck oh. said have faith! You know, and then Henry yep. has faith in himself. Here we go. This this is a battle to empty the tank on. We haven't we've been we've been tanking things up. Let's all right. Yeah. So let's, let's so Professor, you're like, have faith, have faith in myself. That's right. <laughs> what is the deity listed on your character sheet? It is me. I am my own. You worship deity yourself. One day. That's right. You remember yes. the words from your own holy tome, the tome that you that you read, that you took from baba yaga's hut yes that for some reason was was your own would describe your own godhood you remember that and you're like no i am my own god and foe oh, the magic cuts through the summoning magic that brought the horrid yes. spider beast called a bebelith uh and it disappears in acrid purple smoke i'll just remove that from the The nice thing, the nice thing about summon creatures is you don't get their XP. <laughs> uh. Is that true? <laughs> it's it's so it's so it's such a dicky rule. It's like, but it's the power of the creature that no, you'll get you'll get some XP for defeating the devil. Yeah, the, the creature that's capable of summoning it though is is yeah. powerful. Yeah, and contains XP. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll also That'll throw be... in some XP for the Bebelith. Uh, Suck it all out. The, <laughs> the all surprise Bebelith. Oh, we're not finished your turn. So now oh, that you. you now that you have no more fortune points and no more hero points, you're using a piercing. Uh, yes. Phantasmal, Phantasmal killer, killer on the probably high level caster. I would think, yeah. I think what she's the, probably pretty high level. What is the DC of your piercing phantasmal killer? It's going to be DC 30. Oh. It's going to be 22 plus spell level is 4 plus it's an illusion. That's plus 2 plus the 2 I poured into it from spending 3 arcane pool points. Oh. So her will save of plus 20, while impressive... <laughs> it's not a sure thing. So the first Did check is whether or not she believes the the horrible thing um and if we were able to switch points of view which i'll just describe even though you you don't know it the thing that she finds most horrible is this massive titanic red carapace mantis creature that apparently eats the people that displease it a creation of the god Seth unleashed upon this world in jealousy that other gods were raising races. Uh, and she gets a 32 on her save. So no! she manages to... No, she's like, that is my god. And she pushes that fear from her mind. Yeah. 
Tribe of Bone Warriors. Uh, they are... Luke Rebecca had yelled that there's a protection around him, so they're rallying around him, and they're kind of forming a rank. There's not quite enough of them to form a military unit, but the... Um, I think the threshold is somewhere around 20 or 30, and then they'll start acting like a military unit. But they do run in, and they're firing arrows at uh, one of the Red Mantis assassins. We'll say the one out in the open. They're trying to help. And... Let's see, these are the rogues. No, they're even more jumpy than the other ones. So they, they managed to kind of head fake the uh, the warriors that are firing arrows at them. And somehow uh, uh, the street is littered with arrows and not one of them are sticking in the foe. Um, Thurgus, round four. Uh, do I have a charge lane for the Red Mantis Matron? Yes, she's glittery and standing in an open doorway. Uh, they, Does she they... appear blurry? Or anything she is glittery and i think glitter dust counters any of the blurriness that she might have had i'm sure it's visible i didn't know if it would counter any displacement effects yeah let me let me just double check <clears throat> that's interesting glitter dust does does uh negates a lot of those weird other like what it, it doesn't mess with images would it no all the because it's like kind of similar it's like an illusion based uh it doesn't say it affects blur oh it doesn't i think it just makes it visible yep. okay i'm yeah. going to spend one action to use barroom brawler to activate blind fight and then i'm going to spend my other two actions to charge uh a charge is a three round action thing oh it's not a standard no there is a special charge action in the surprise round, which is move once and then strike. Uh, charges, is, charge is move twice and then strike. She's 50 feet away. You've got 10 foot reach, right? 50, yeah. I've only got 40 feet of movement. Okay. Though. So you could double move up to her and attack, or you could charge her, but you wouldn't be able to do any of your power-ups when you charge her. Okay. I'm going to change this up a little bit. Okay. Uh, instead... Apologize. Uh, I'm not currently threatened, correct? Nope. I'm going to cast Channel Vigor. Uh, so I'm going to Vigor myself. And then I'm going to take one move action. Uh, let me look up Channel Vigor really fast. Take the, the haste effect of Channel I'm Vigor? I'm going to take the benefits of haste. Yeah. 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 I'm going to choose my limbs. I'll take the benefits of the haste spell. I get there in one move. Uh, so it's two actions for the spell, one for the move, and then because I have the benefits of haste, I can take an extra attack. You get a haste attack. Are you moving right up to her? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, uh, that, but, but the path of the movement, I think you could even avoid that dude with your movement, so you don't get in. There's no AOO from that uh, assassin warrior. So you're right up to okay. her. She... There's this weird clicking noise that she makes, and she's trying to raise a hand to block whatever badness is coming this way. Uh, in, in order to do this, I have to drop rage, though, and I am currently fatigued, because uh, I can't cast spells while rage. So, okay, she uh, has an AC of 34, and she does have a blur effect running. Okay, uh, so this is plus 20. They're just like, uh, uh, I'm so tired, but I'm so fast. You can do but it. I'm so energized, but I'm so tired. <laughs> uh, that's a 44 to hit. Smack. Your, your adamantine blade cuts through a bit of the corner of the lintel of the open doorway and then comes cracking down into her. Maybe. Let's roll the blur. She, Her armor is taking the... Uh, her armor and flesh is taking your damage. 38. 38 points of damage. Okay, she she grunts at that uh, and does not like the position that she's in. Wicked Claws. Um, let's see what the movement of a dragon is. Uh, 
We're turning it around, guys. We got some its momentum. Its speed going. is forty, so it kind of goes down a ramp and then is trying to make its way out this front. So it it spins around to. It can't fly. No, its wings are 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 maimed. Uh, they're all mangled. Right? Yep. Some other fight he was in in the past has never been quite healed. Uh, so he moves to the doorway here and is growling at the Red Mint Assassin. Uh, Bukrebeck is unconscious. Texaracted Gat is hunting. Um, Red Mantis Warriors, there's one left. Hey, a flank. So he's going <laughs> to... Uh, he's going to... The Matron... Yeah, she does have weapons. Uh, she has a uh, like a a blade that is kind of in the shape of a boomerang. You think it's called a kukri? Cool. Uh, he moves in. He's going to try to tumble. Thirty-seven. Does he beat your no. CMD? No. Okay, you get an AOO. CMD's forty right now. Look out behind you! Oh, the blade comes flashing in. He tries 30, to, he, tr to he tries to duck, and with his blur spell, oh, you, you tag him. <laughs> Forty-seven points of damage. Oh, Ooh, this is a lot. That that should do it on that guy. One hundred and twenty-seven. He is unconscious. As Thurg is like cleaved into this doorway, he just kind of lets his sword rest on the ground, like it hits yep. the dirt. And he's just kind of, and then he just backhands it out through the doorway to clip this guy as he's trying to run past. Horrid spider beast. Red mantis matron. Okay. I don't like this at all. <laughs> nah. <laughs> No, you don't want to be a spellcaster standing directly in front of Thergus. <laughs> Killed my two warriors, you got rid of my summon creature, and now I'm being attacked. And the entirety of the jerks emeritus are have now rallied and they're all they're all doing stuff now. Sounds like somebody's gonna run like a little weenie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Perhaps she uh -huh. needs reinforcements. Oh man, that means then the story of Red Mantis Assassin Rogue Number Two, who I'm just calling Tony at this point. Tony's <laughs> whole uh, calamity where the spider just fell on him when he wasn't paying attention. That story's going to get back to the office now. Okay, she's going to step into the building. She... Can I take an action? Can I can I use a hero point to take an immediate action? Or a standard action? You can take an action out of turn with a hero point, yes. If she takes <laughs> a five-foot step back... Yeah, kind of, so uh, she was standing in a doorway. She's taking a five-foot step diagonal back to get cover from uh -huh. you, basically. Okay, I want to cast Dimensional Anger. Oh, okay. That's a good <laughs> <laughs> I want to yeah. spend my hero point to make sure she doesn't fucking leave. <laughs> that's uh, a, that's not today. <laughs> All right. You need a touch attack from me versus cover, right? Yeah. Give me, give me, give me one second. So fortune points. Yes, you do have a hero point. I'm nuking that right now. Uh, the initiative. Drain the tank. All right. So I need to, I need to find her touch AC. Her touch AC is 13 less than her AC, which is 34. So her touch AC is 21 with a blur effect. She does have cover, so it's 25 is the touch AC. Okay. Hopefully blur doesn't save her. That's no, a 35 to touch. There's no save on Dimension Anchor, is there? But the, nope. it still requires that she be touched. It's a 35 to touch, so okay. if she blurs, she blurs. She is now glowing green, blur. and she is glittery. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, no running it's, away. It's, you it's, started it's, this. You finished it. <laughs> right. Okay, her, 
there was kind of like a almost like a high pitch surprise noise gonna click uh coming from her when that happened and then she she looks she looks at you all right so she stepped back so at least she could cast without getting aoo'd unless That's you have she's oh she's got cover you said yeah she's kind of around okay. uh, around the corner of the inside of the building um yeah. Okay, you want to play. <laughs> nice use of a hero point, dude. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Jack would be so proud if he was a, if he was conscious. You will be. Yeah. You, you will be destroyed. Is what she says uh, as she uh, touches an unholy symbol of the red mantis god. And a horrible blast of necromantic energy swirls around Thurgus as she's casting a death spell. The, uh, the Do you have any SR? I do not have SR. Okay. Her destruction spell will deliver 130 points of damage. Do you need a will save? There is a fort save involved. Maybe not the best oh. save to pick with this. Let me set the DC before you roll or tell me what your thing is. Um, okay. The DC for her destruction is 25. 25. Okay. And it does not count as a fear effect, correct? This is not. It is a necromancy death effect as coils of energy are lashing out at you and, and trying to stop your heart. I got a 30. All right, so you made a save. So instead of taking 130 damage, you instead take... I take nothing because I'm stalwart. 28, and because of stalwart, you take nothing. Son of a gun. What? I just stare at her. No. What? No No more of that. No. What? What is, what is stalwart? It's my 11th level Inquisitor ability. If a fortitude or a will save allows for a save for a reduced effect... I instead take nothing. <laughs> no! And the energy just scurries away <laughs> as as his armor begins to bleed the blood of uh, of the uh, of the blood bear. Yeah, she looks worried by her stance and trying to move back. She is worried. She should be. <laughs> A little chef's kiss, eating that destruction. <laughs> Ferrisse <laughs> from up top. Uh, Pixel is going to pull out a different wand, tap me, and make me invisible. Okay, uh, UMD. Don't roll a one. Okay. Right. Yep, you turn invisible. And then I am going to cast. Cloak of Dreams. Cloak of Dreams uh, gives a five-foot emanation around me. Uh, any creature that begins or ends their movement in within that that within five feet of me has to save or fall asleep. That's cool. Minus four if they have scent. Okay. Um. Yeah. So that's a. A one round cast, so you can get that done in three actions in this system. So, so I I'll take the full three actions there, um, and finish that. Yes. Uh, Bard song continues. I'm gonna say your familiar is not affected by this. Doesn't matter. My familiar is a plant who's immune to sleep. Nice, but. I was curious about that, and then I remembered, oh, right. Pixels are going to do all sorts of stuff. Plant traits. <laughs> yeah, plant traits are pretty good. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that's we, crazy. we need to help them. Maybe it's time for a fireball. Yes. Yes, it's time for a fireball. <laughs> uh, Red Mantis rogues. Well, the chirp. The point of going after him. All right. They had their last order before things went bad was to take out the casters, which was one. 
Two is they may react to actually protect their matron um, because they're very frightened of something happening to her. Uh, nope, they're going to follow their orders. So they move around into flanking positions around the professor, reloading their, their blow darts. Uh, nope. This one comes in with his knife instead, and this one comes in with his blow dart so that there's a, uh, at least a flank. All right, the guy with the knife. Uh, I'm going to do uh, another round. I'm going to do spell shield again. Okay. Clink! Your spell shield saved you from getting a uh, dagger oh, of uh, an assassin's dagger. This it's... ornate looking dagger what tried to try to thrust into your ribs and you blocked it so he moved around he attacked he will get a second attack uh also missed because of your shield and then this guy with the blow dart he can he had to move he reloaded and he can fire once in a flank ac 35 that'll hit that hits huh All right, 22 damage with the sneak attack. Ooh. And then a uh, professor can only put the spell shield on one side of his body at a time. <laughs> <laughs> this one is in your it's in your calf. You're like, "Ah!" Your calf explodes almost as this as this thing goes really deep in. You you're pulling it out. They have crawling hands trying to run around your body, pull pull darts out of you, and then your fort save, I think is just don't roll one. Yeah. Uh, stop hitting me with those damnable darts! <laughs> Are you still? Oh yeah, you got completely healed by Bookerbeck. Uh, Not completely. It was like thirty something, right? Yeah, I'm okay. I back to thirty-five points of damage. Uh oh, uh, it's the professor's turn again. All right, so there is a, a red mantis that is like threatening you. He's also next to Bookerbeck. You do notice that he looks down at Bookerbeck. And he switches. He switches the the handle, like uh, his grip of his dagger, from up to down. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am down one action this turn because I used an immediate just now before my turn, right? So I'm down to two actions this turn. Correct. Okay, I am gonna just do dual spell casting, and I'm going to silently cast two phantasmal killers. Okay, can you do this defensively and not incur an AOO? Uh, I don't think I have any special traits unless I have some kind of magus thing. I let me just double check. Concentration check on what? Phantasm Killer's fourth level. Yes, I think so I can make DC twenty three. Twenty three. Yeah. I forget. Can you run me through? I, I haven't done this one in a while. What do you, What do you need to do? If I don't cast defensively, he gets an AOL, which I don't want. I, so I want to cast. Yeah, and casting defensively is is a cast level check, so or a concentration check. So DC is um, well, uh, the the rolls D D twenty plus your your concentration, which is what. For Magus, it's plus twenty two. So yeah, for Wizard, it's plus twenty two as well. Okay. Uh, plus. Yeah, so don't roll the one. And yeah, the DC is nineteen twenty three, uh, and you've yeah. got plus twenty two. So if you rolled a one, you'd get twenty three. You'd still get it. So you yeah. automatically make your de your defensive. Yeah. So you incur no awesome. AOS. And who are these two horrible freaking uh, phantasmal <laughs> killers against? Uh, we're gonna go after these two jabronis. Yeah, you shoot. can't see her because she's she's ducked inside the building a little bit, but it looks like Thurgus is still yeah. staring her down. Uh, yeah. All right, so one against the rogue to the north, one against the rogue to the south. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do rogue one first, and then okay. rogue two after that. It, it maybe uh, rogue one again if you have to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't, know, I don't want the Boogerbeck to die here. Um, yeah, Rogue, Rogue One looks like he wants to coup de grace Bukerbeck. Oh my god, look at their will saves. So shitty. <laughs> uh, DC is... Oh god. <laughs> what is it? DC what? 28. Oh. 
It fails the will save. Does he see his boss too? The giant Vantus? Uh, yeah, and then the fort save is just as crappy. So he fails both saves. Um, this Red Mantis assassin uh, uh, clutch, he drops his dagger, clutches his chest, and, and falls back like he was struck by something. Dead. Nice. Mm -hmm. Professor blow on his finger like it's a gun. There's something weird happening to his flesh. Like his flesh is catching fire underneath his armor. Yeah, we saw them kind of disintegrate the last time, too, I think. And then the other... The other uh, phantasmal killer... Uh, DC-28? Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> nah, it doesn't look good for him, either. It's like, <laughs> I'm a rogue! You, you, you got a villain point in the tank. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> I, I want to answer that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's get rid of those. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, Especially like around now, it, it uh, would be Apparently, good. these yeah. things have seen horrors before. Um, uh, this Red Mantis assassin clutches his helmet and he tries to pull off his helmet as his flesh is, is, uh, is disintegrating, is kind of turning to uh. ash inside his armor. And uh, Booker Beck, when he got knocked out, it was was it because of damage? Because he's only, he's only at eight damage, right? He got knocked out because of poison. Oh, uh, knocked out poison. Yeah. Okay, so cure light wounds is not going to do anything for Booker Beck. Okay. I think you can uh, actually yeah. just spend a full round action to wake him up. Uh, the Shake crawling him. claw will jump off my shoulder and just start slapping Booker back around to wake him up. It has done this before for the professor, I think, several times throughout the campaign. Just kind of... It's also invisible. Maybe it becomes visible it when it strikes. might be unconscious, but not asleep. Yep. He, he, slap he, away. <laughs> he, yeah, the, yeah, the crawling claw that's... is slapping Booker back. Uh, Booker back's not waking up. In one minute from when he fell unconscious, he needs to make it a secondary fortitude save. If he fails that one, he's asleep for hours as opposed to uh, just a short mm. nap. Oh. Uh, yep. Um, that's, that's me then. That was the professor. Okay. This is the reason why they didn't want you casting spells. Uh, the tribe of bone warriors uh, are... They see that there are no other opponents. They're going to... Ru uh, a couple of them stand guard over uh, Booker Beck's body. A few of them are rushing over to help out uh, Thurgus. Uh, he's been poisoned. Uh, where is your apothecary? We must revive him. And then we're going to say that more of them are on their way. Uh, to help out Thurgus, we'll say two of the warriors have got long spears and they take up positions and they're they're just trying to poke at the doorway to give Thurgus an aid on his next attack. And Zephyros has got yep. nothing to shoot a fireball at. They they hit they hit AC ten, so they are aiding your next attack. They're basically. Uh, uh, trying to fish her out of that corner she's in, and uh, you got a plus four in your first attack in the next round. Hey, look at that, Thurgus. Uh, okay, so I got to go through this doorway, right? I'm assuming it's a five foot doorway. Yeah, it's made for smaller folk, uh, so it would be a squeeze. Move action to get inside the room. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, and so the move action will also incur an AOO. She will get to attack you as you're moving in, unless yeah. you want to stay squeezed in the doorway, which is a minus four AC minus four hit. I don't. All I right. want to basically get in, but block the doorway. Perfect. So she can't leave, yep. ideally. Yeah, so you're in the room, you're blocking the doorway, and uh, she's uh, uh, she'll take her AOL. Okay. AC31 with the weird blood red kukri. <laughs> Okay. Okay. And then my first attack is at what you said, plus four? 
Uh, plus four because these catfolk warriors were aiding your attack. Yeah. Uh, understood. Plus four. Okay, so I'll make my first swing at her. Uh, that's a 36. Her AC is 34. It was because of the aids that you hit. <laughs> uh, she does have a blur nice. effect, and it, it does not help. Okay. Uh, do you mind if I do these together? That's fine. She doesn't have any DR. I'm, I'm just going to continue to swing at her. So. <laughs> Until she's uh, no more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, not a crit threat. Uh, 42. Resoundingly hits. And then the hasted attack is a natural one. Why do I always get natural ones on my hasted attacks? It's like the worst thing. Can I spend my immediate to re-roll it? Yeah. I will do that. I think I only have one of those left today. <laughs> okay. Minus 10. I rolled a two, but it's not... Not a critical crit. miss. Yep. Yeah. So you hit you hit twice. It's so brutal. It's almost like I don't want to take those third iteratives because minus ten is ah. it's easy for me to confirm. Uh, for eighty eight points of damage. Okay. Across uh, two swings. Yeah. Squash this bug. Eight is forty six and eighty is a hundred and twenty six. She is now bloodied with that second attack. Ooh, she's got some meat on her bones. Yeah, she's meaty. Yep. Wicked Claws. Um, he's going to come over to see what's going on. He double moves to here. You know, pushing that guy out of the way, so he's sticking his head into the doorway. You want me to roar? Fuck yeah, mate. Okay. Get mad. Wicked Claws, while he cannot fly, has learned how to concentrate his roar into cones instead of just affecting everyone within 120 feet. So oh, he, cool. he blasts a, this, this devastating lion-like roar uh, in her direction. Basically roars in her face. Uh, she needs to make a fortitude save. Or do I need to save as well, or is it no? Order? No, he's okay. he's directing it. A fortitude saver become fatigued. There's also a chance that she becomes deafened, which which also uh, would hamper her uh, her spell casting. Spellcasting. Yeah, it's like twenty percent failure or something. Yep. All right, fortitude is this. The DC is twenty two. Oh, she made it by nice by one maybe the helmet's helping her <laughs> the bug padding <laughs> she doesn't seem affected uh, and uh, the dragon can can roar again next round it's like a dragon breath you could just keep on doing this uh, until everyone is death and everyone's <laughs> What was it? What did I say? Shaking? Good roar, mate. Good roar. <laughs> uh, fatigued. Everyone's tired and can't hear. Uh, stop <laughs> roaring. Uh, Booker Beck is unconscious. Tech is hunting. Red Mantis warriors are unconscious. The Red Mantis matron. This stupid thing is on me. Okay, so she is going to defensive. She first, first off goes defensive. So she she's... Her AC Open goes her up. AC. She's got nowhere to step to, so she's going to defensively cast a dispel magic to try to get rid of the uh, the dimensional anchor. dimensional anchor effect that is affecting her. She's a thirteenth level caster, minus eleven. She automatically uh, let me let me just double check. Her concentration is plus nineteen. The DC is. 21 so oh she could fail on a one if she rolls a one she fails to cast offensively she doesn't and then she's going to try to get rid of that uh dimension anchor effect she dispels 11th level magic i am 11th level caster 
All right, so the dimensional anchor goes away. She is still glittery, however. Now she has a single action left. Not enough to cast that teleport. Nope. It's not quite a teleport, but yeah. Uh, she is going to step away from the door. She didn't like all those spears. And I think that's it. You will fail. We will come until you're destroyed. Pharisee. Pharisee will cast teleport. <laughs> oh my god, is that what you were queuing up? Uh, I get it now. I see what you're doing. And then... Pharisee will cast a wickened ill omen. <laughs> uh, that's uh, we'll dirty. That a quickened ill omen on the, the Red Mantis Matron. Okay. On the Red Mantis that Matron. Is dirty. Uh, quickened ill omens, fifth level. Uh, so 25 to cast it defensively. I successfully cast it defensively. Okay, her spellcraft check. She she looks at you. She knows what spell has was cast on her. She doesn't get to do anything yet. And then, when does she have to make that save against um, the aura? If she starts or ends movement within five feet of me. So the beginning starts or ends her turn. Okay, so at the beginning of her turn, if she's still, she she'll need to make a will save, basically. Yes. Pixel takes out a little wand. Thurgus plucks. Pharisee smells like that. That uh, like this heavy incense and the uh, the violet uh, um, the the violet lotuses, the dream lotuses. It's like she's got Don't this come too close, buddy. Perfumed aura around her. Uh, it, that is that is very very potent. <clears throat> uh, Pixel plucks a leaf from from her uh, from her body. Yep. Takes a wand, touches the leaf, it's a wand of silence. Okay, so there is a aura of silence that is now 20 feet from Pixel. <sighs> Who lacks verbal spells? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, wand, CMD roll. Don't roll one. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I didn't roll a one. Okay. Pharisee. Cleric killer. Red Mantis rogues are all dead. Is Pharisee wielding a weapon? Does she, does she threaten? Uh, yeah. Pharisee, um, Pharisee has a, a pick. Tribe of Bone Warriors, they're not forcing their way in here, although more of them are showing up to, like, like back what's going on. Uh, they're switching their, their bows to spears. Uh, these two are moving into the room. And they're going to aid again. Uh, both of them have bonuses that give them AC 10s. They're barely hitting AC 10s, apparently, with these rolls. But, uh, yeah, you've got a plus four in your, your next attack, Thurgus. Uh, as they're poking her with spear, she looks really frazzled. You can't hear anything. All of your ears have popped, and everything's all kind of in this weird slow-mo. Thurgus. I'm going to spend a move action to Barroom Brawler for dirty fighting. Okay. Uh, that allows me to not provoke. I, I can forego the bonus from flanking uh, in order to not provoke with a combat maneuver check. All right. I have my top left corner through. I, I'm pretty sure I'm flanking with Pharisee because yep. of how big I am. Yeah, yeah. Corner to corner. Uh, then I'm going to attempt a grapple check. Okay. 
Oh, sorry. Hang on. My fir my first action was a move action. Because uh, is the grapple a standard or is it considered an attack action? Uh, the grapple is a standard. It's two actions. Okay, yeah. Then I'll grapple. Forty-five versus your CMD. Yeah, forty-five. You you put your you put your big meaty paw right around her neck, but then something weird happens. Some sort of magic squeezes your hand away from her, uh, uh, squeezes her neck away from your hand, and you simply slip off of her. Okay. Do you have any way of getting through freedom of movement? <clears throat> no. no. All right. Okay. And then with my last, uh, your haste attack. Yeah, haste attack. I had to let my shift my grip, so I'm gonna make it as a claw attack. Okay. I can't, I can't you, grab you, you get you get angry and yeah. slash at her weird armored face. AC thirty four. Yeah, it's only twenty three. Okay, she ducked that one. She lives to fight another round. Uh, <laughs> wicked claws. Smells the horrible smell and goes, Is that you? He was going to blast a cone of, of his um, uh, roar in there, but he smelled Ferrisay and is just now like stalking back and forth angrily outside, wishing he could fly to the top. I look back at him and say, Oh, you muted yourself when you were saying something. You look you back at him and say, What? He's, he's in the silence. <laughs> oh. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a good one. That was a good one, Max. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> all right, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> In the, in, yeah, the in the world of in the last two uh, years of like you're on mute, you know. At, yes. <laughs> at oh work in a game. Yep. Uh, uh, Bookerbeck unconscious. Tech is <laughs> just out in the wilderness doing things. I'm gonna remove those red mantis warriors because it doesn't look like the matron is going to run out and heal them anytime soon. <laughs> Same with the rogues. Those guys are dead. <laughs> Yeah, they are. Her turn. How does she get out of this? Okay. Uh, she might fall asleep. Right now. will save on the sleep. Oh yeah, uh, an ill omen because she needs to make it twice. Yep. Because the she wasn't she good. wasn't able to wave off the ill omen effect. <clears throat> right. So she rolls. Oh jeez. Very well. All right. Fine. What? Now, this is going to incur a lot of AOOs. She's in silence, but also deaf? Deafened? It's, it's actually not... three. Ill Omen applies to three rolls, so she's still got two rolls worth of, of Ill Omenage. Nice. All right, so I she's going to. She's going to drink a potion because she has to to get out of here. Because um, this is this is awful. It's a mess. Okay. Uh, she cures an AOO from Ferrisay and Thurgus uh, for drinking a potion in melee. Uh, does, she, does she provoke when she draws it? My question is, can I disarm her if I don't provoke and I disarm? So a potion is three actions, two to drink and one to pull out. So yeah, she does. Uh, no, she doesn't. She doesn't provoke to pull it out. It's the act of drinking it that does. So. She, she... Okay. But you is could there, you could is... try you could try to disarm it from her face before she she. Puts I would it in like her mouth. to try that. Okay. Disarm it from her face. Well, she's like putting this bottle up again, like into the weird, into the weird uh, yeah, uh, tubes yeah. in her. Uh, you just uh, never get to say something like that, you know. Yep. I'll go ahead and make uh, make my AOO. Uh, an eighteen, I assume, does not hit. No. 
Uh, I yes. lost Cloak of Dreams. Don't need that. Sorry, I've got 15,000 tabs open. I need to kill some of them. It's uh, <laughs> a lot of tabs, buddy. Yeah, I know. Bard yeah. Song is lingering because yeah. there's no way I can maintain it in the silence. Right. Her CMD is better than that, especially when she went defensive at the beginning of the round. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. I don't know if you have any... It's not within four either, so... All right, she, she turned her elbow as you tried to swipe at it. She drinks the potion, and she can't do anything else because that was a full round action. Your AC 18, her armor, and her cloak kind of flutter in a way that keeps Farisay from... Uh, hitting her. However, she ends her movement in your awful sleepy time aura. Do we know what the potion did? Uh, it's not a cast. It's okay if we don't. She didn't do anything. Day. So, no, I don't think you know what it did. And none of you have okay. like arcane sight up or anything like that. Nope. So, nope, she drank a potion. No visual effect yet. For what it's worth, I do have Death Watch eyes, though. So if she became like, if it was like a, a huge heal or something like that, I would tell her she's not bloody or something. I think. No, she her it didn't change how injured she is. Okay. All right. It's, it's begin their turn or end their movement. Um, so it's possible she doesn't get hit by it a second time right now uh, because right. she hasn't moved. But yeah. So if she ended her movement and she still had stuff to do. Okay, so she she already made her okay. save this round. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now it's her turn. She drank the potion and took the AOs. Now it's Farisay's turn. Uh, Farisay? She's still evil ill eye her. Okay. Uh, what dimension of evil eye? Saving throws. <laughs> okay, she's going to want to make this save. Uh, it's kind of not going to matter. Yep, I know. So now it only lasts for she rolls one twice. Round? She rolls twice because of the ill omen effect. She still makes it, I think. Right. Yeah. So it lasts for one round, or is it? And one? she'll take a minus four on saves. Okay, minus four saves until the. Shh, shh, shh. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Until your turn, basically, right? Uh, yeah, until until my turn comes around, I think. Makronom. Professor. Uh, I'll spend... Uh, I'll kind of sh shoo the uh, crawling claw off of Bukerbeck, uh, and I will force feed him an antitoxin so that when he makes his next save against the poison... Uh, he'll be in better shape for it, I guess. I think awesome. is how that works. Yeah, he'll, he'll get a plus four uh, in a couple of rounds. And uh, then the Crawling Claw will take out its uh, wand of Cure Light Wounds and will attempt uh, a UMD check. Uh, what was his UMD? I think it was 13. Scroll, 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 scroll. Yes. Uh, can he use the wand today? Yes. And then that was 1D... 8 plus 1. 8 plus 1? This is on the professor. Can I also go defensive while I'm, uh, while I'm here? Yes, yeah, that's fine. Uh, that seems wise. You would have had a pen you would have had a penalty on your t your, your AOL, but that's that's fine. Um, oh, but it was just, it was just my turn, so just oh yeah, on your, evil eye and go defensive. Beginning of your turn is when you go defensive, then you evil eyed and and yeah, uh, and did your thing. That's fine. Zephyros is after casting a couple of buffs is flying out of the <laughs> nice <laughs> is nice. flying out. He's he's what's going on here. He's he's uh, about fifty feet off the ground, and he's he's coming out to see what's going on. Makarnam sitting on his shoulder. 
the door in, in there. There's a spell castle that needs fireballing in that building. Yes, there's lots of people in there. Be precise then. All right, Wicked Claws is is there's not enough room for him to squeeze in there, so he's not going to go in there. He's waiting. It's also there's an area of silence when he stuck his head in. He didn't like not hearing anything. Bukerbeck is unconscious. Tech is hunting. Red Mantis Matron goes defensive. Does she fall asleep? Wait. Oh uh, yeah, she. Did I get skipped? Uh, Thurgus. Yeah, beginning of the round. Sorry, my bad. Okay. Uh yeah. Uh. I'm gonna shift my grip. I'm just gonna wield my, wield my weapon in two hands again. Um, my standard action is gonna be warrior spirit. Uh, so I'm gonna enhance my weapon. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the the aiding of those. Hey, they've got plus eights. They aid. So on, on, on <laughs> yeah, your first attack, you got guys. a plus four. Yep. I'm gonna How does take, this place survive? <laughs> uh, plus two and the truthful enhancement. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to make two attacks. These are two young catfolk warriors that are out to prove themselves. <laughs> okay, so it's 31 and then plus the 8 is 4, right, on the first attack? Yep. Okay. Oh, attack number get one. her! Get her! Yeah, of course. You you feel Christopher's anx anxiety. Uh... First one's a 46, uh, which ignores displacement. Oh, nice! Uh, there we go. Wham! And then the second attack. Oh, oh my fucking the god! The uh, I'll spend my last immediate action. Okay, to re-roll that. Yeah. Oh man, my last use of determination. Minus five. It's a four. It's a forty to hit. Okay. Um. Both of them are potential hits, even though she's gone defensive. And the blur? Uh, it ignores the blur. Oh, it ignores it. Well. Because Truthful penetrates both of those. Two hits. And activating your judgments doesn't require verbal. Uh, it's a supernatural ability, and it's not, it's, it's not a judgment. It's warrior spirit. I channel energy into my sword. Okay. Yeah, I looked it up. It has, doesn't have. It's not spell like. It doesn't. No, have that's fine. It it works. Uh, Eighty nine <sighs> damage. So I have an, an area four, effect but... that isn't hurting the party. Is that? <laughs> Is that allowed? Are you allowed to do that? <laughs> I'm not sure that's okay. I appreciate sure, somebody. Can you, can you get like a, a, a visions of hell in here? Yeah, let me throw something in there. Somebody's getting their saves too good in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh. 89 points of damage though let me see she is at oh she's unconscious yes oh that's gonna be rough on the will save although unconscious is basically <laughs> she... like okay so Thurgus she's asleep and unconscious. switches he, he's annoyed after trying to grab her and then swipe the potion away he turn he he goes back to two-handed grip on his blade and then just starts to smack her into the ground. She kind of bounces off the ground and starts floating a little bit. You now know what potion she drank. She drank a potion of fly. Uh, she's trying to fly away. She was trying to fly away. I think. Uh, so do you have any other actions left, Thurgus? No, that's it for me. That's that's four okay. actions at least. Yeah, Wicked Claws pacing. Bukerbeck's unconscious. Tech is hunting. The Red Mantis Matron uh, has to make a con check and fails. She is bleeding. I'll dismiss the silence and cast Analyzed Dreamer. Um, Pixel needs to dismiss the silence. Oh, yeah. Pixel yeah. will dismiss the silence. Okay. And then I'll cast Analyzed Dreamer. All right. And essentially, I, I want to know, like, is that armor going to disintegrate her? Uh... I don't think she's dead dead. It's she has a good number of battle 
spells and blessings all coursing around her. Each round you may yeah. examine a single creature object that you could see as a free action. Um, so you're looking at her armor. Yeah. Because this guy, like, one guy was trying to take his armor off. And you just automatic... Oh, it's a freaking six-level spell. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one's pretty sweet. This one's awesome. I'm pulling out okay. stops here. All right, so let's talk about her armor. You're looking at her armor, and her armor is... The equivalent of plus three breastplate. It's not made from metal. It's made from some sort of... Uh, uh, chitinous material or chitinous material it's made out yeah, of some sort yeah. of bug carapace um it has the deathless quality on it okay and it has worked into the armor a contingency mm, here you go and the contingency is has got a some sort of specialized um, uh, disintegrate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's her armor that would disintegrate her on death. Uh, if we take it off before she dies, we might still have the body. You also know the contingency is... Um, kind of linked to others. Oh. It's also tied to the armor of the others. Oh, interesting. So perhaps if she dies, they all disintegrate. Perhaps if she dies, more than just the people here would disintegrate. I'm not sure who all it's linked to. Is this her whole crew? Um, yeah, right now it's right now it's linked to four other. You can see tendrils from the oh, contingency okay. leading to four others. Uh, to no, sorry, four two came. two others. Sorry, two to, of them. Yeah, to two. two of the ones that came. Yep. Um, maybe take it off. I'm not sure what it disintegrates. Maybe just the bodies, but maybe something else. The warriors are already cheering. You did it! You killed the Red Mountain's assassin! You you got you got the matron. Hey. Makram! Oh Could you take off this armor? Oh We're clever with little devices that have uh have tricks. Okie dokie <laughs> Makaram comes uh uh kind of bouncing off of Zephyrus who lands inside inside the uh the building that has no roof. Uh Makaram begins to strip her of her armor. Uh this woman, she is human, has undergone mm, uh, has had a hard life. She has a lot of scars that are either from acid fire or both that cover maybe about half of her body. Um, she does not... Well, the token suggests it. She doesn't wear her hair... Uh, part of her scalp has been uh, has been shaven. Well, uh, like almost like a mohawk and a, t a ponytail is, is left behind. Um, her helmet looks like parts of it were actually fused into her ears up her nose and kind of like tubes leading into her gullet. Ooh. There's an, a strange organic quality to her helmet um, that you would have to analyze separate from her body. Okay. 
once Macronome takes that off, I'll keep the analyze rumor. I think keeps going. Yeah, I'll just pop pop things one by one with my level six identify. <laughs> All right, the helmet, um, you don't want to put on because it, while it acts as uh, certain types of goggles, uh, goggles of night, giving her dark vision, uh, they also have an effect that the creature who the armor is made from or like the helmet is made from it's made from that same uh carapace like material uh there is a mind fog effect against creatures that wear this armor oh makes you extremely vulnerable to to, to mind affecting effects from but this only creature. only from this particular creature yes some red some mantis god probably mm. the rest of our items are kind of the things that you'd expect a um a cleric assassin to have She also has a, an alchemist um, um, kit. Okay. Is the contingency still active on that on that uh, armor? The contingency is still active on the armor. Uh, Makarnam is taking it off, and yep, if you... Oh, is this for eating or for keeping? I think we'll set it aside for a moment and understand it a little more. Although, if he ate it, it'd probably break the link. Oh. If he kept it, it might even break the link. If he eats it, he likely destroys it, says says Zephyrus. Let yeah, me go check on the nice. others. Makronom. Maybe strip the others. It's probably their armor that'll destroy them. Professor, what happened? Uh, uh, Professor is... I think cradling Bukerbeck's head on the ground. <laughs> Have faith, Bukerbeck. Come back to us. It is me, Henry. <laughs> you must have faith. Uh, bump it to my... ah! Yes, yes, it's all right, Bukerbeck. I've saved you. It's okay now. The fighting's over. You're a sight for bleary eyes. Yes, yes, well, I guess we all saved each other today, eh? Two peas in a pod, best friends for life, huh? He 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 takes the <laughs> he just left the darts in him, he like spits out the dart and Was was that crawling claw thing in my mouth? Oh uh, lots of things happened while you were uh, unconscious, Bukovac. The important thing is that you're alive and that we won. Ah I see. Well, uh, we could lie here in the street with your head in my lap for no, the remainder he, of the afternoon. He, he's getting up. Zephyrus <laughs> offers him a hand without touching the ground, of course, and, and pulls the <laughs> back to his feet. Uh, what are you doing with the Red Mantis assassins? Uh, appa I... Apparently, the catfolk of the Cowell Mounds are no friends of these assassins, and they're well aware of what they are. They're spitting at them, calling them cream lovers, and uh, they want to put them to death. Like, Can I uh, walk into where everybody's examining the matron? Yep. Um, uh, I'll see, I guess, her helmet on the ground. Uh, I'll walk up to it, pick it up, and start studying it for, say, about a minute, and do a psychometry check on uh, her helmet. Okay. We could probably ask who hired them to kill us if uh, if we got to talk to her. She might not tell us, though. And she's really dangerous if she gets awake and can cast. All right, give me your psychometry check. 47. How many pieces of information? Oh, uh, it's every, I think, five. Let me just open it back up. 
Can you do like that super dispel magic thing so that she doesn't have any buffs if she wakes up? Then I could actually tie her up. The other thing we could do is kill her and then speak with dead. <laughs> By 10. So uh, 15 is the original. And then so that's 1, 25, 35, 45, four pieces of information. All right. Uh, while you're doing this and you guys are chatting, Makarnam's fiddling with the armor, Ferrisse, you've let that spell go down, right? The sleepy spell? The sleepy spell I would have to dismiss. Yeah. Um, and Henry's looking at the helmet. I need all of you to make a sense motive check. I would also allow a heal check. To notice that somebody, while you guys were looting and investigating, is awake, but pretending not to be. I got a 46. Oh, fuck. I even got a 25. Right. I, I, like, Thurgus hasn't been doing anything this entire yeah. time. He's letting people talk about magic and stuff. If yeah. she starts to twitch awake, or if I see wounds start to heal up, I'm going to use Warrior Spirit to change my weapon into a merciful greatsword and beat her into unconscious okay, so, with so a shitload of non-lethal damage. Her bluff check to like pretend that she was still unconscious as her, ween, her, as her wounds slowly healed um, is 24. So anyone who gets a 24 gets to, gets to act in the new surprise round because not everyone got 24. All right. So, Red Mantis Matron is still is still kicking. Now, she has something like... Uh, Damn it, 23. <laughs> it's okay, guys. I got this. Psychometry. I'm focused in. <laughs> She's got 199 damage. And that minus four saves have, have gone. Blur effect is still running. Oh, and that fly spell is still is still up. All right, so she's actually just prone and pretending to sleep. She doesn't have her armor on. That's gonna suck. Who all who all noticed she was awake? Yeah, I need to get to just that. Just there All right. I know. I. Uh, I'm gonna just quickly roll initiative. Just put me at the bottom, that's fine. <laughs> I got it. I actually got a better dex than I did before. I got that pusty dex modifier these days. Holy fuck, Thurgus, your what? initial modifier. So... Whoa! I'm busy, dude. All I'm right. trying to examine this helm. Th Thurgus, <laughs> do you beat the 24 bluff checks? You rolled really crappy. I you got see, a you, saw, you, you saw her kind of like go like this a little bit, and then she, like an eye open, and she kind of closed her eye, and you saw her wound slowly healing, and she was trying to pretend that that uh, she was still unconscious. Forty six, yeah, you immediately. Maybe it's your death watch eyes or or something. You just know that she's she's awake. What I'm are you doing? Standard in, action. What are you doing in your surprise spirit. round? This is two action round. Oh, it's a two action round. Yeah. Uh, as a surprise round, I will attack twice non-lethally at minus four while raging. <laughs> <laughs> that should, that should do it. <laughs> yeah. All right, she doesn't have the uncanny dodge feats because she's a different kind of build. Um, <sighs> Does that help with prone? Her prone is minus four AC. She's got her off and no helmet. So yeah, she's she's... Her AC is just brutal at this point. And it, she's flat-footed. So kind of don't roll ones. That's really what I'm... So the first attack at minus four because uh, attacking non-lethally is a 40. Yep. Oh, and she then... still has a blur running. Uh, has <laughs> it... Oh, fuck. <laughs> no. The has fucking it been... blur. It's been longer than a minute? It has been longer than a minute. Uh, okay. Then a second attack. Wait, does... No, never mind. 
That's uh, is oh. that second attack does hit. Her AC is garbage right now. Okay. Uh, and it gets through the blur, and you knock her up. You do like what? About four. Yeah. Fifty points of non-lethal. Okay, she is unconscious. You're lucky uh, you then... did it in that round. I mean, I, I rarely get to go early this early in combat. I was about to really show you how it's done. Here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'm I'm going to continue to do that. I'm gonna do it like <laughs> two or three more times. Okay, so you put her at 150. We'll say 150 non-lethal damage. She's 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 beat up, and I will. Uh, Ferris, say, can you get rid of that whole freedom of movement thing? Like, it's a nice trick when I do it, but I don't like it when I can't tie him up. I can attempt it. Uh, I can use a dispel magic, or we could just kill this bitch. Eighteenth level magic, <laughs> targeting freedom of movement. Ah, uh, yeah, you get rid of her freedom of movement. Okay, you tie her up. Um, uh, she can still with teleportation. She is teleportation. All she you can't want to say? More grappled and pinned. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> At least I hope. Yeah, you you're gonna put something in her mouth like a gag. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. No still spells for you. Actually, I think you still have to make concentration checks even if you're grappled, even if they are still spells. Well, the big question, though, is do we want to ask her things or do we want to just uh, not worry? Oh, I don't know. I, I just beat her into unconsciousness as soon as she started to wake up. It was just we've a got... re reflexive action. Yeah, we've got time to think about it. Let's kill them. No. Wicked Claws. What shall be the fate of the two assassins? assassins. Uh, he sticks uh, his head inside the inside the building and is asking Thurgus and uh, the group. You know, um, not not to speak for the group, I normally let Ferris say do that, but we're guests in your city, and um, they sort of attacked us while we were shopping in your city, so I feel like it's your choice. He, he nods to you and they are summoning once things are declared safe chief one life uh, along with uh, ash dancer and a very very cautious uh, um, thousand bones are coming out to see what what has transpired they are stripping them of gear which they're leaving behind for you guys uh, and it does look like they are nice. going to um, that their hatred of, of the red mantis assassins is quite strong they, there's no trial, there's nothing, uh, there's no chance at them redeeming themselves. They seem to be building a pyre, and they don't necessarily care that these two guys are simply unconscious. Uh, I have so no you got it in? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, Thank I you take the, the, the paladin sword, and I just kind of, like, hide it behind my back, you know? <laughs> I cover his hilt again. Shh, yep. Don't listen, little buddy. I promised them a whole bunch of chances or something, but they're just bad people. And <laughs> I put a boy. <laughs> Maybe uh, stab this one to death in case we want to question the corpse. Thousand Bones does approach. Uh, this one was their leader. Yes. Seems like it. The Mantis are enemies of all. Of all peoples, uh, they kill indiscriminately. They are the killer of priests and kings, and they worship a fell god in the reaches, the deep reaches of Bostera, maybe even beyond. They are. They have consigned their souls to evil, and are irredeemable. Can I ask a question? This one. This one is, we, we know of her. She is one of the matrons of the temple. 
yeah, go ahead and give me a religious, like what, what's the religious question? Uh, my, my curiosity was more, you made a comment about the, the red mantises worshiping a God that got mad about the other inherited races. I was just curious if whatever that God would be an enemy of the blood bear. Or not. Hmm. So this story must have been recent. Maybe it's in your discussion now with Thousand Bones, but you can give me a, a knowledge religion if you want. I got a nat one for six. <laughs> sort of like, uh... <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, I know what you mean. It's totally a bad person. Yep. Um, <laughs> an, assass <laughs> an assassin bug? Yeah, you just kind of decide, yeah, it's an enemy of my god. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's just not, it's not right. I know, it is red, but, uh, <laughs> it feels like a different shade, maybe. Yeah, it's red on the outside. It's supposed to be red on the inside. It's just not oh, natural. Speak for yourself. Oh. <laughs> speak for yourself. Oh, you don't count, little buddy. You're from the inside, just on the outside. Okay, we need to get on the outside. We need to get out of here. Yeah, you always say that. Uh, does the, uh, uh, psychometry... Oh, yeah, the psychometry the on, the, on the helmet. Um, mm -hmm. how many pieces be, of information? It should be four, uh, should be able to pull four memories. Okay, the, this the first memory is when this, <coughs> uh, woman was first being given her helmet. You're in some shadowy place you don't get a really good sense of the location it would not be enough for a teleport um, you know that there was some ceremony where where uh where she was kneeling before an altar and there were others around her shadowy forms that were bestowing upon her her helmet um so there there's probably more of them more of these assassins a second piece of information is that you know her name you heard one of her sisters um in dark faith uh saying her name her name is cinnabar um you know that the helmet did not start off as an implement of the red mantis god, but over a lifetime of service to the god, it, 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 magics were improved over time. Uh, you also know that she was, because you're seeing through the helmet. Um, you see a very, very fat, noblish wizard um, hiring the Red Mantis assassins and meeting her face to face for a for her most recent contract. Do I recognize this this fatty from my days, maybe at the academy or something? No, you recognize this as Togemore, the oh, the, yeah. the bloat mage. Uh, you suspect they were somewhere in uh, Grand Station when when they met. Cool. I will drop the helmet. Oh, not the worst memories I've poked around in. Uh, yes, she was hired by Togemore the Blunt bloat mage to kill us uh cinnabar's her name if anyone's interested before dispatching her from this world uh gave her life in service to this uh, wretched red mantis god uh, helmet seems to be uh, quite improved over time with magic anyway um are we done here thousand bones She is a treacherous creature. I don't know what you expect to learn from her. Durgis? Oh. oh, right. And I just smashed. Okay. Coup de gras. Oh, wait, were you asking my opinion as I wipe my greatsword off on my leg? 
<laughs> oh, okay, good. I thought I misread I, that. I feel like I understand what your opinion was, though. <laughs> A thousand bones just kind of with 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 uh, two motions of his hands, the two Cacboak warriors go in and are dragging her body to the pyre. They seem to want to bring the evil outside their walls before setting the pyre um, uh, fires. Uh, they ask you if you want to do it. You're not too sure why it would matter. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I wouldn't mind giving it a light. Oh, would you? Do take that from Zephyros. Oh, come now. He always gets to light things on fire. Let an old man have a bit of fun. Okay, when Zephyros is certain that things are okay, he says, he mutters that he's going back up to, uh, up to the, the room uh, as he was doing stuff. Bukerbeck's not very interested in, um, in the pyre ceremony, he kind of waits for commerce to return. He actually starts helping clean up a little bit in the market square. Um, there seems to be a solemn ceremony as they consign their enemies' uh, bodies to ashes. Uh, I assume they're going to cover this in some kind of flammable oil, right, to help a guy out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they they hand a torch to you and they've, they've put some... Uh, some dried de desert uh, uh, plants in a bed. The bodies are on top. There is some oil placed on uh, top of that. I will summon an unseen servant and hand him the torch and then forget about it. And then I will summon a <laughs> uh, major image uh, and I will make rise, uh, I guess kind of like puff out of the air above the pyre uh, like a flying winged fiery um like similar to this dragon guy like a cat folk thing like some harbinger of the desert some cat folk kind of inspiring thing uh just wreathed in flame and it will belt a mighty roar and then breathe fire down onto the pyre and then as uh a shadow gambit um i will i believe it's a standard to make it do some fire damage to light the pyre okay are you trying to do this to frighten everyone or are you trying to do this to inspire <laughs> everyone or are you what are, I... are you trying to do evoke any other emotion with this display uh, I think it is awe-inspiring yet terrifying at the same time. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I mean, it, you react to it how you react to it, I think. Okay. Um, they look very nervous. Thousand Bones puts up his hand. He's going to try to make a will save uh, as he's trying to wave some of the illusion away. What's the DC of your illusion? Uh, 27. Okay, Thousand Bones seems to be casting a spell to protect others. Others are panicking a little bit. They're, they're, they're it, bolting, or at least... It uh, will disappear immediately once it uh, does the fire damage. It like uses up the illusion, as I understand it. Okay, um, they don't know what to make of it once the fire is burning and, and the bodies are definitely being cremated. They, uh, a thousand bones begins to pray before the fire. Uh, you've made the people of Kala Mounds a bit nervous, or at least the warriors that were outside overseeing this. There's whispers in Catfolk, uh, um, uh, in Bastani about uh, spirits. Uh, the spirits might be angered. Um, and some of the Thousand Bones begins to, uh, like, he, he kind of does a prayer to some ancestors at one hill, and then he calls out other ancestors at another hill. And this, this, this goes from something that might have taken about uh, an hour to something that is now taking many hours. Great. Um, ah. <laughs> Perfect outcome. 
Uh, I will be fascinated. I'll take some notes uh, about this <laughs> ceremony where I get to see play out. It's probably a pretty rare piece of uh, anthropology I get to witness here. Well, he's, point he's pointing at hills and evoking the names of ancestors who've been buried there as he's trying to um, uh, placate the now angry spirits. He's now apologizing to the spirits for unleashing the spirits of their enemies within their um, within their territory, within their site, within their uh, within their grounds. And professor, give me a knowledge religion. Uh, plus nineteen. Twenty three. The hills around this village could very well be the mounds of Callow Mounds, meaning the funerary mounds. There may be more to the name of the tribe of bones. You don't think that they bury their dead. I'm oh, sorry, you don't think that they burn their dead. This seemed to be a very, very um, particular action they took against the Red Mantis. You're now starting to think that each of these hills around the village is a giant tomb. <laughs> oh, what wonders. Oh, what treasures would lie in... <laughs> well, wait, there are too many... If there are too many hills here, these might not be just the people who have died living in this village. This could be the... The tombs of the kingdom of Rakasta that happened before. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mass graves. Um, they, nice. yeah, they they didn't quite understand that that was an illusion, and managed to. Um... Hey, thanks for the follow. Sorry, I've got everything minimize so small Let's see where that was and apparently don't have twitch open no that's not what I want creator dashboard ALX project. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, they. This is a um, kind of in the way that the Fant had also their uh, no no worries. Uh, also had their graveyard in Bostera. Um, so too did the Rakastans, the the Catfolk. They might also have their graves here too. Um, you do remet you do recall that Grand Station was not always ruled by the Patrian sovereignty. Uh, it was the Rakastan kings and queens that um, that ruled over Grand Station long ago. Yeah, I'll I'll take some pretty studious notes uh, documenting the ritual as the king acts it out. Yep. Uh, Thousand Bones is quite clearly the chief um, uh, priest or shaman with regard to uh, rituals for uh, burying people. You, re you recall recently he went all the way to Grand Station to recover the body of one of his kin. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Uh, the ritual ends. You have a dozen names of important family lines. Uh, of Rakastans, and the names are not all traditional. Uh, they might be from different tribes than just the tribe of bones. Eventually, they do go inside as uh, winter in the desert is um, 
does get cold and uh, the winds whip up and they decide they've had enough for today. Um, but effectively, the bodies of the Red Mantis assassins have been uh, turned to ash and are now blowing in the wind. I'd like to find Wicked Claws at some point here. Yeah. Uh, Wicked Claws observed uh, the the ceremonies uh, and did, did come in with everyone else. He, he's, he's accessible. Uh, you saved my life, Wicked Claws. Uh, uh, potion did. You're a good friend, mm. and I, I owe my, I owe you, I owe you a great debt. Mm. More than this, but I give this to you as a token of of the debt that I owe you. This is a headband that I made for myself. The first thing I made. Mm-hmm. I will come back with something with something greater, something something perfect for you when I find it. What does it but do? But if there's anything that I can do for you, let me know. What does it do? It sharpens your mind oh. just a little bit. <laughs> it doesn't sharpen my claws. <laughs> I'm afraid not. Not this one. I I'm not very good at claw sharpening, you see. Uh. All right, what is it? Uh, circulative in plus two or something? or Plus one. It's it's plus the, one? the first one that I made. Oh, yeah, you made that weird one. His int is yeah. six, so it turns into seven. I don't think that actually boosts it, but he's like, no. mm. he, he, he likes it. He, he doesn't change any of his inflections of speech or anything like that. He, no. Yeah. Uh, better. I'll find something better. Better I was at flying around and delivering the potions in my younger days when my wings worked. Yes. Yes. How, uh, how did it come to be a wound that, uh, that that potion couldn't heal? Very bad fight. Is it cursed? No. It's too torn up. Mm. Does Pharisee have heal? Yeah. Uh, it's not amazing, but um, I will. Use my perform once out of my three times in place of my heel check. Nice. Um, <laughs> As you diagnose what's what's happening. The yes. weir- weirdest doctor visit ever. <laughs> uh-huh. Let me get the flute of <laughs> the flute of diagnoses. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> It's cancer. Oh, horrible. <laughs> oh, so so dark. Uh, okay. Um, no, it, it's just they've been mangled and torn too much. Uh, you think, Ferris? Say it would, regeneration. It would require a regeneration to heal his uh, to restore yeah. his wings. Yeah, I'm just going to keep an eye out for regeneration, and if I run across that, um, I'll I'll use it on him and and, and consider the debt repaid. Okay, uh, fair say. I'm not big on debts or anything, but but. Yep. He's it's like a he's he was friendly enough, like. Yeah. Uh, as you're kind of returning to the treasure pile, Thurgis, or you know, going back to your room or whatever, Chief One Life is waiting waiting there with uh, three of his guards, and uh, one of them is Zemko. Zemko just salutes you almost, like he gives you a nod. Uh, Chief One Life doesn't like confront you, but he's sort of walking with you wherever you're going. Uh, it's like it's like he glided in beside you and wants to have a conversation. All right, thank uh, you. To me? Yeah. Uh, well, you're yeah. the you're the you're kind of their idea of a the perfect warrior. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll nod to him and I'll take his lead. I'm, I'm pretty good at sense motive. So yep. Uh, his guards, his guards follow in in behind. Uh, they look like they 
are more on the lookout for more trouble as opposed to uh, suspecting you of any um, uh, nefariousness. Uh, Christopher just waves to them and one of them looks at the weird little thing and waves back, not sure if he saw something on your shoulder or not. Chief One Life says, I must thank you for defeating our foe. It has been many years. I'm sure you'll share my thanks with your fellows. Not. You suspect he's giving difference to you because you're the biggest warrior and you also defeated Crojan, eats what he kills in that uh, in that contest in his hall. Um, Thurgus is trying to be on his best behavior because he realized he kind of slipped up and was like really offensive at the party. So he's kind of tight with you right now. Yep. <laughs> he sort of like casually mentions murdering their big, you know fan favorite so he's just kind of like yeah yeah you're welcome these mantis worshippers are not welcome in many of these uh, in many of these lands Our oh it's not the first time we killed them they have haunted you before have they yep they they try to ambush us in this house one time uh, you know, I try to make a habit of, of not letting any of them get away. It is with my deepest respect that I asked for you and your heroes to move on. <laughs> <laughs> attacked us before then we came to your town then they attacked us again and like we should probably not be here is that what you're saying this time none of our people suffered right i worry that the next attack will be will be more destructive yeah yeah that's fair i hear what you're saying um, are we good to sleep here tonight, or are you lot kicking us out right now? You may stay the evening, enjoy our fires and shelter. You may open up a cask of our, of our finest, and he says a word that means alcohol, um, or two if you need it. The reason why I am concerned is after speaking with Ash Dancer and thousand bones and we know that that one has two sisters this one is sort of a leader of bands of killers her next sister is one whose spells could levy a village and her third sister cavorts with fell things that mortals should not um, cavort with. You saw that uh, they spoke of some spider beast conjured from the depths of the pearls. Um, this third sister could conjure worse. And is said to have some shadow always at her side. The other two are, have slain many. They are feared throughout the pearls. If you remain on the move, they may not be able to track you down as well. And I have my people to be concerned about. These assassins are but men in strange armor. They still need the things that we humanoids need. They would be very foolish to follow you out into the wastes where you are headed. Uh, I got you. Are, are you guys going to be okay? Yes. Okay, because I, I really hope they don't come here looking for us, you know. Lord. Well, they did. We left a trail or something. They did come here looking for you. 
Oh, they've been here before. The other sisters, I mean. No, thankfully. God bless. But we know of them. Do you know where they like hide out, where they hang out, or where they get their mail? In the opposite direction that you travel. Mm. The Scorpion Wastes. It might be a different pearl, even. It is, it, it is not the place where... Let's just say this is the historical hunting grounds of the Cream. And there are still some wild Cream tribes that have survived the Great Purge that are out in those wastes. Got it. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we'll make a, a good show of, you know, celebrating with people and whatnot, and then we'll fuck off in the morning. Um... I can't make any promises, but I like the idea of traveling to the Scorpion Wastes and maybe getting the jump on them assassins before they, you know, hunt us down to something. It is a place of death. Ah, oh, sounds like my kind of place. And they say the god, the Mantis god itself, lives at such a temple. I would not make that... I would not make that journey, nor wish the journey upon my worst enemies. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm in the god fighting business right now. I'll oh. have to ask... Uh, um, I'll have to ask around. He looks at you, he grins a little bit, thinking that perhaps it's just bluster, not quite truly knowing that Thurgus... Um, <laughs> Has this irreverence? <laughs> Can I concentrate on the quest that Desnobia gave me to figure out whether or not she thinks that that's like in the right direction? What is... Give me a second. Um... Thurgus has a Gias quest from Desnobia that is unknown at this point in time. Um, you can feel Desnobia's sadness when you concentrate on her, but it doesn't lead you in, in any particular direction. It's, it's the same feeling you have when you, when you think, when you think strongly about her. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, in being as polite as he can with the killer heroes, Chief One Life is like, Fuck out of my village Dude, before they. Go. <laughs> you guys gotta go. You've been here for substantially overstayed that welcome. <laughs> You've been here for seven days. You're on some quest. Please leave. Jumped <laughs> off like a bunch of really shitty gear and have been like mugging all the townspeople to give us money and stuff. Yep. I they they probably weren't even bothered by that by the by the commerce they were bothered by and horrible assassins show up and the next wave is going to be worse. I mean, last week, like six days ago, we kind of summoned like a demon storm of the titans. Yep, which it, that wasn't probably good. May for have <laughs> also contributed to his decision that it's time to politely ask our guests to leave. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'll I'll love with them and, and take off. And I'll, okay. I'll convey the sentiment to my allies as well. Oh, we were leaving anyway. Oh yes. Um, we have overstayed our welcome. But the thing about leaving is that by the time you come back, they will be thankful to see us again. I think we've certainly been memorable, and that's that's important. Hmm. Well, if we ever come back, I do believe that uh, the Titan God, uh, you know who, is unraveling this creation. Uh, I do believe this pearl will be destroyed before too long. Uh, not, not, so maybe... Not so know. loud, Professor. People live here. Oh, well, I mean, they should probably get the warning soon, right, Bukovac? Give them the old chance to uh, do some commerce with a travel agent, so to speak. I don't think I agree. The pearls have been around forever. We'll stall oh. the winter a bit longer. Yes, forever. What was uh, before forever, though? 
Seems the person oh. in charge of that has grown tired of forever. Let's not wait oh, around. Didn't last let's, forever. Let's not wait around forever. We gotta get the fuck out of here, right? Eh? Oh. Yeah, he's wrong. Does anybody hear? <laughs> yeah, we don't really hear or he, see him much. No, he he kind of like. It's like in the periphery of your eye, and then sometimes you see him, and then he'll appear when you talk. It's kind of like an imaginary friend. You guys, at, at this point in time, know that he's real because he's crafted stuff for you, but it's easy to forget his presence. Like, it's, it's very yeah. easy. I mean, like, for his quips and stuff. Really, yeah. only Fergus gets to enjoy that. Uh, they, well, you guys are all having a, a little uh, uh, a little meeting. Uh, no, you, you, you heard him say you need to get the fuck out of here. Yes, uh, they're not idle threats, Spookabrek. Uh, the end is coming, it seems. I don't know that even we can stop that. It might be best just to ride the crest of that wave and perhaps guide the destruction in a more meaningful direction. Well, I do understand that the sovereign queen in this horrible thing that she wears, this entity around her, is no friend of commerce and no friend of the um, goodly and religious people of Grand Station. Ah, uh, yes, her. I had forgotten about her. Oh, seems a bit of a small potato now, come to think of it. But I do believe we should still uh, put an end to her. Give the last few years this pearl has uh, some shine to them. You are a pessimist, says Zephyros. Oh, oh, is a pessimist for eating or for keeping? Makarnam clearly yeah. doesn't know the name or what that word means. <laughs> I think the professor has a good point. But there's no need to panic anyone. We do need to find our way, though. Yes. I don't know how far we would have to run to be safe. If the known pearls are safe, they yeah, may be in the path. Yeah, but that's a problem path. for tomorrow's tomorrow. We, we just gotta fuck off and get this blessing of Iambulus or whatever. Is a good start, yes. Uh, yes. The, no. the closest of the two places that Thousand Bones told us, where the tribe of the moon, who is nomadic, goes to, is the House of the Moon. And beyond there, there's the, um, the Acropolis. We should probably go to the House of the Moon first. It is where he said they are likely at during this time of year. Yes. Uh, was that the temple with the uh, dreaming, or was that the no, Acropolis? I can't that's recall. the other one. Uh, says the uh, further. Pixel. Uh, yes, well. And we'll want to go there, I think. Yes. The dream is part of the way out. Something bad is there, though. You have to be careful. Of course. The nightmare. Great care. My ambulance is nightmare. Yes. They'll want to see us cleanse it, though, too. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. The Tribe of the Moon also has these truth speakers if we want to prove our great deeds or whatnot. Oh, I'm sure if we just hang around long enough, they'll get the message uh, of our greatness, of course. We're still not thinking about getting swallowed by giant worms, are we, says Zephyrus? Oh, I wish you wouldn't have said that. Now you're going to get him excited again. Oh. That's right. we got to go kill that worm from the inside out. I completely forgot. Good job, Zephyrus. Mm. You got your head on straight. Yes, I... It's on straight. Oh, and then, so, get swallowed by the worm, and then I swallow something inside the worm. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, well, isn't that a curious... It's like a nesting mimic. Does I'm such a thing interested. exist? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to have good dreams tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
It's been quite the day, then, hasn't it? Uh, shall we break into some of... I've heard some rumors of casks from the royal stockpile being uh, levied. Yeah, you um, you end up breaking open some casks of uh, this uh, spicy mulled wine uh, that the Rakostans and catfolk of Calamounds make. There's also there's also this like fermented weird type of cactus. I guess the closest thing it would be would be tequila, <laughs> nice. like an agave plant sort of thing, like a a, a, a variant of agave. Um, between the two of those, you can get as drunk as you want that night. The next morning, uh, the winds are the winds are high. Uh, it's very unpleasant to be outside of the uh, of the Callow Mounds. Uh, you have your roughly sketched map, uh, the closest location, which skirts around the Cinderlands, uh, which is the, um, the very sandy desert, uh, is the House of the Moon. And then you can see probably a couple, maybe three days travel through the desert uh, towards uh, another dot uh, leads you to the Acropolis. Now you could cut right through the desert sands to go to the Acropolis or you could go around it. Deeper within the desert sands, there's a warning that the, the hunting grounds of Cindermaw um, uh, are, are marked on the map, but it's more like a large swath of territory where the truly gigantic worm and perhaps some of its spawn um, do, uh, do roam. So before we end tonight, what path are you taking? Are you taking going around the sands to get to the house of the moon are you going dra cutting bisecting the sands to get to the acropolis or are you doing something completely different i think we're probably going towards the house of the moon where we know those guys are and which is a, we want to go there first before we go to the acropolis uh i know we're like trying to stay on the move but i don't know that we're gonna do anything intentionally uh dangerous like cut through the sands i think we'll probably take the longer way around them and you're using your uh conjure carriage to conjure conveyances your i think so okay uh, any objections to that uh, itinerary oh, that seems reasonable the sands themselves might not be amenable to your carriage anyhow I object no. on the grounds that we're not visiting Cindermore. Uh, we're we getting there. We need a truth sayer along with us yes. to vouch for the, the feet. Exactly, uh, Faris. Okay, exactly. Okay. It That's doesn't so count. Convenient. All right, all right, all right. I can see I'm outvoted. <laughs> no, neither Wait, of these... Give you time to train, read up on giant worms and the like. Neither of these things is us getting out of here, you realize? Oh, it's, you know, it's, it's part of getting out of here. Oh, okay. You Gotta that... do all this stuff before we can leave. You said that last time, but okay. I suppose one uh, point and in our favor. It, it's unlikely the Titan will uh, destroy this pearl with me still on it. What with me Why do you keep on talking adapted. about pearls destroying, being destroyed? Why are you being all negative? Didn't you hear the voice in the wind last week, uh, Bukovec? No. Didn't you hear? The end is coming. The unraveling has already begun. Ah. Look around. We, once we kill the queen, things will return to normal. They'll be better than normal. Oh, you think? Uh, do you think Salvatore says that sentiment? Do you think that's what he glimpses on the horizon in his dreams? A return to normal? Uh, he, he he seems to want to take the opposite side of you, which is kind of what Bukerbeck does. Yeah, we're best friends now. We saved each other's lives. <laughs> uh, <laughs> reluctant he companions. The <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, as is tradition, we name our games after we play because sometimes you don't know what the hell is going to happen. Uh, what are we going to call it tonight? Ooh. Surprise, surprise. Uh... Callow surprise? 
Something with bugs, maybe? Mantises? He rose up to a point. <laughs> as well as the Red, red sands? Uh, yeah, red sands, sure. Uh, overstaying our welcome? <laughs> don't, don't let the door hit you. This is, this is going to be a really dumb QA joke, but uh, I like the idea of bug escape 